I really think that you could do your own take on the Nightwing. I, I think I, you could pull it off. I really think you could. It would be fantastic. Like, uh, the girls would be about it. They would... It doesn't have to be form-fitting. You don't... You want to keep going? I'm just saying, you don't have to be all... It doesn't have to be, like, the, you know, the super muscular guy. Really? Yeah. You just... Do your own thing! I just... You could totally do it. I think we've had enough of this conversation. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> So, with Halloween coming up in just a few short weeks, we're going to be talking about cosplay and costuming. And different ways that uh, you might make some of your own things for your costume. I'm Olav. I'm Outlander. Welcome to the Nerdening. So don't tell me how to act or how we should. As you can tell, um, we have have we we have plenty of prop guns here at Olaf Productions. Mm. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot more to costuming and, and cosplay than just your props. Well, yeah, I mean, like I grew up, you know, I bring it up like every other episode, you know, Aliens and Predator and that. But I grew up loving those shows and especially like Jurassic Park and the, the the live effects of all that stuff. So as a child, I actually, the thing I wanted to do was go and, uh, you know, get an education from Stan Winston's FX school or Tom Savini's, but I heard he was kind of a dick, but... Um, I wanted to build monsters. I wanted to build crazy amazing things and now i'm an adult and i gotta work a job and stuff but i'm still working on my shop i'm still yeah. putting my shop together and i had a shop at our old house the new house it's coming along but then i'll be able to do even bigger things and i've been playing with metal so <laughs> and that's one of the things that i've noticed with a lot of uh a, 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 some people are very determined that it ha it, they have to have metal they have to have you know, it has to be the actual thing. And I mean, that takes a lot of time, that takes a lot of money, that takes a lot of effort. And it can get heavy, too. Yeah. As I learned when I built my digigrade stilts. <laughs> yeah, that, the, yeah, there's, there's a reason why not a lot of people make those and use those. Those are kind of a pain. <laughs> I could probably... I could probably do something, like, instead of going carbon fiber, I could bundle some kites bar. I mean, it's strong enough for, like, the super big Japanese kites we used to build our foam swords cores out of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But with a lot of stuff, you're looking, the biggest thing, particularly with costume and cosplay, is you want it light, you want it comfortable, and preferably you want it good but cheap. That's just pretty much anybody, because it's still, you're... you're you're making your own clothes virtually, and then your props that go with your clothes, and you're only going to wear it so often. Yeah. And it's not like you're going to work in it, unless you're one of those people. Well, and, yeah, there are a lot of people, and, and cosplaying in particular has gotten really big with some of the shows and stuff that, that, have, been co that have come up. Now, one of the things that I kind of, I'm kind of questioning some of the stuff that, like the cosplay, the, the, the cosplay shows and the professional cosplayers is a lot of them, from what I've seen, don't necessarily play the part. They just so kind of really dress up. Yeah, and really, do they're the thing. doing they're doing costuming for a specific thing, like they're a specific character, but they're not necessarily. I mean, I I guess the the biggest difference between costuming and cosplay, as far as the people that I know that do that that do cosplay, is cosplaying is your yes your it, it's a combination of costume and play, and most people focus on the costume and they don't take the time to to really act the part of their character, and that's kind of one of the best things about yeah, it. Like I I. I at least a half dozen or a dozen times now. I've done a, a costume for a Halloween party that 
some friends of ours used to throw, and now apparently my wife and I do it. Uh, but I'd show up, and people wouldn't know it was me. And I would act in character and stalk about or whatever the, you know, costume I had. And people would have to go, wait, 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 is that, is that Outlander? <laughs> because he's be really creeping that girl out. I was really good at that, but... <laughs> yeah, and, uh, oh, I have I have one that I did, uh, that, that actually another friend of ours did a couple years ago. Um, it's just a black, uh, basically a black suit, black hat, oh, the yeah. whole nine yards, and a black uh, paintball mask. Mm-hmm. And the thing with the, the thing the, that like I love about... human face paintball mask? Yes. But the thing that I love about that costume in particular is the fact that that mask is... That mask has no emotional expression. It has no expression. It has no emotion, showing no emotion whatsoever. But everybody sees something in it. And nine times out of yeah. ten, they really project their their thoughts and their feelings onto it. Now we're getting into the psychology of cosplay. Or the psychology of masks. Uh, it's, it's... Cue the Jim Carrey. It was one of those wonderful things that, you know, it... I know some people that felt that Oh well, you know the the. I feel like you're judging me, and it's like okay, that's just a very judgmental <laughs> mask. And these were people who, I mean, li- the least little thing would set them off. They judge a person for it. Uh, some people thought that it was a very aggressive and very oh that person's looking for a fight. And actually, um, our friend that wore it one year, uh, he actually had some people that are like that that legitimately wanted to start a fight with him because they thought. That mask was aggressive and angry, and that's kind of one of the that that's one of those interesting little things that, I mean, it, people ju- people people may see something in your costume that you you don't or you're not you know you're not expressly you know it's it's not something that they should be seeing or something that's realistically even there. Yeah, well, that's what I liked about I, I always liked about the uh, like the foam rubber masks. You know, I've done those a couple times. So when I worked at Haunted House, I did this, like, the Red Devil mask. And it's this this foam rubber uh, or foam latex that you glue it on. It's already pre-molded and everything, and then you paint it up. Um, but I love that I could speak. I could have a drink. Um, but I could move my eyebrows, my cheekbones, and all those other things that people use as indicators for what's going on. And I could use that to... Uh, Creep them out even more. <laughs> like, hello. Now, as far as making stuff for yourself, there's a few little things, a few little tricks that a lot of cosplayers use. And some people that, I mean, seriously, they make their living do it, making props and costumes and stuff like that. And one of the big things that I've seen, particularly in the, the more, more and more in the recent years, is EVA foam. It's been around for a long time. People have been using it for all kinds of things. But uh, the biggest, I'm, the biggest thing people have been using it for is floor mats. That's where a lot yeah. of people get their EVA foam. Is you can go down to Home Depot and get some get some regular uh, EVA foam floor mats for I think a pack of four or five of them. It's like twenty twenty five dollars. Typically, yeah. yeah. Um, now this one is actually from Sam's Club. Um, you get. What I think there were eight sheets of it, six or eight sheets of it for twenty five dollars. But the problem I have with this is that it's extra thick because it's got this diamond pattern on it. But see, most of the stuff actually is the thickness is just that black part without the yellow. And that's cheap. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to stand on that for eight hours. <laughs> no, but that's that's the type of stuff that you normally f- will find at like Home Depot. Mm. But and here's the beauty of this is this is actually very, very moldable. And now, very light. Yes. One, one of our cosplay rules is make it light. <laughs> super light, but this is just a normal uh, a normal heat gun, normal Wagner heat gun. Just for a short little time here, we're going to heat this, we're going to heat this foam up, and I'm going to show you why this is a preferred, the preferred item. doesn't sound too bad, so I'm going to try and talk yeah. over it. Maybe um, maybe focus on an area so we can put a bend in it. But yeah, um, we're, we're just going to heat it up here. And we're going to heat both sides. And it doesn't take long for it to heat up. 
it does not take long at all for it to heat up. You can't really see it, but it's already losing some of the texture because, you know, the heat. But then once there you have it heat, heated, you fold it. You, you create a bend in it. So we're going to create a 90 degree bend here or so. I'm not going to break out a protractor. And it usually takes about one minute to cool. So and that was only like 20 seconds of heating too. Yeah. Um, now I don't know with particularly with the thick stuff if a hair dryer will really get warm enough. Yeah, it might. I, I particularly with the thicker foam, it really does pay to have a heat gun. Um, it I will heat one. it up faster. It'll heat it up to a good temperature. But then after about a minute, we have a nice bend, and it's pretty solid. It's it's probably going to hold. Now this is basically two two like inner you know two two along the edge type things. So it's not actually a solid piece. You can actually see here, you know. We'll go ahead and pull them apart. We're gonna yeah, you, you can totally pull them apart. But I that for a simple bend, that's what you have. Yeah. The real advantage here with this is that you can cut, bend, mold, make whatever you're you're trying to do. I mean, you'll have to put more work into it than we did, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be require heating enough to to get it really to bend around and stuff like that. If you want to mm -hmm. do that, but, but I've seen people make like armor pieces, like full suits of like the um, the the Spartan armor from Halo. Yeah. Um, Judge Dread armor and helmet out of just. Floor mats. Yeah, floor mats. You know, <laughs> Basically, uh, it's 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 a great it's a great material for that material for that, and I will be using a lot of it when I finally build my uh, one tenth scale Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim. Now there is one guy that um, I think he actually goes on Twitter by uh, Chinbeard. Um, Chinbeard. Yes. Uh, but he actually he does he makes a lot of props from EVA foam. Um, I will put a link to his Twitter account and stuff down in the link in the description below. But I mean, I, he just posted a, a video recently, basically where he made something similar to this without the scope. He ma basically made a big, you know, futuristic style revolver just out of EVA foam, just out of this, just, just out of these, these floor mat type foam. Yeah, and that's that's impressive to take something that is porous and and full of air like that, and make it look like metal. But that's the other thing too is what you put on the outside. And that is a really big a really big note that you want to that, that I want to bring up with this type of foam is you can paint it. The problem is is like Outlander said, it's porous. So the best painting practices that I've seen is you actually want some plastidip. And plastic dip, think of it as like Elmer's glue that will, you know, the, the way Elmer's glue dries or the way uh, fiber, the, like the fiberglass uh, resin dries, it, it makes its own solid surface and it's just plastic. Yeah. And originally it just came in tubs and basically it was like if you had a screwdriver that the, the handle, you know, the handle wasn't cushioned, it wasn't, Book. didn't have grip. Yeah, well, you basically still get you, it just, that way, yeah. you just dip it down into it, lift it up. Boom! Let it dry, and you've got you've got yourself a good well, good and, grip. And people are even using it now for uh, that that flat matte finish of a paint job on cars. You, you plastic dip your car virtually, yeah, and you get that flat finish. But you spray, but basically you spray the. Uh, I usually get the plastic dip and spray, and you just spray this. Usually, you want to do two rather thin coats. Because you want it to still kind of be flexible, and it will still actually have some flexibility to it. That's, Not as much. That's the advantage to the plastic part of the plastic dip instead of using like fiberglass and cardboard or something like that. And then you can pretty much paint it any way you want. You can use spray paint. You can use, if you want to do detail work, you can do detail work. That's real quick warning. That's one of the problems with, with certain kinds of foams in that is that if you just straight up spray paint them, either A, they won't hold the paint... Or it'll work off with being bent and stuff like that. Or B, it'll actually burn into the paint. Um, now with this, or burn into the foam. With, with this, with the EVA foam, 
Um, if you just straight, straight, straight paint it with like spray paint or something, it'll soak in to the foam. Now, as far as, as far as adhering two pieces together, um, you can use, um, just, uh, hot glue gun. Hot glue, contact cement. Um, hot glue gun usually works best because then you can, you can still kind of move it around a little bit and, and really get it to just where you want. Now, it is recommended that you use, uh, high, high temperature glue in your yeah. glue gun because that way, if you're, if you have it out in the summertime, and you have it in your car going to a convention, it's not going to heat and break. Yeah. Oh, man. So many times I've, I've had to help friends randomly fix costumes because they use low temp stuff. Now, uh, we need to go to a break real quick. So stay tuned. We've got some more ideas and more uses of how to make stuff for your Halloween costume or for cosplay in just a little bit. And we are back. Indeed. So, one of the big popular things these days is superheroes. They were always kind of popular. They're just super popular now. Uh, with all the movies and everything, superheroes are really kind of a big, big deal. Mm. Now, a lot of people may want to do superheroes, and it may be kind of they they may be kind of trying to figure out how to do. Like the the domino type masks, yeah, or well, the, the the simple face masks. Well, like I did my uh, my Batman well from yeah. the live action Tick series, and I had to figure out how to make one. I was making it out of fabric that matched the cloak and everything else that I had, and mm -hmm. it worked, but it wasn't perfect. <laughs> um, now this is where we're going to talk about the thinner EVA foam. Okay. Now these come in uh, slightly bigger than than uh, a sheet of paper type size sheets. Yeah, it's it's craft foam. Yeah, you know, for for scrapbooking and well, stuff like EVA, that. Well, it's EVA. It is still EVA foam. It's a very yeah. specific type of foam, and that's what you want. You don't want just regular, just any kind of foam. You want to look for EVA foam. But you'll see it marketed as craft foam. And if stuff it doesn't like that. say EVA foam. Don't get it. Yeah, don't don't use anything other don't than just, EVA foam. If, if if you don't know what type of foam it is, be careful because there are types of foam that if you heat it up like this, it's going to be t it's it's going to release a toxic gas or it'll burst into flames at a low so, low heat. Yeah, time. <laughs> and that's one of the benefits. Uh, that's that's why we we recommend make sure you make sure it says EVA foam. Now. One of the th interesting things with EVA foam is, I'm going to show you how to make a real, real cheap, easy mask. But you heat up, wait for it to heat up, and this heats up pretty quick. But basically, you just keep going back and forth, evenly heating this. You don't want to get it super, super hot. But basically, just kind of back and forth and back and forth. Make sure to do both sides. You might be able to see that it's bowing a little bit right now because it's expanding. Which means that it's probably about right. So we cut this off. And while it's still warm, you just stick it to your face and you press down on it. <laughs> and this probably looks really, really silly. And that's actually one of the interesting things with this is it's not that it's not too hot. It's not burning my face at all. And it doesn't have to be. But this is a, a great quick way to get a custom custom mask. And I can't tell what time it is, so I can't tell if the minute's up or not. Eh, but you I'll want to leave know. it up. You want to leave it on basically for about a minute. And you can do this over and over again. And you're ma totally making goofy goofy hand gestures at me, aren't you? Not really. Then why did I feel a gust of wind as if your arm was moving drastically? Maybe I just farted in your direction. No, 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 no. It came from uh, even with my shoulder, not from below. <laughs> Thank you for blowing on my elbow. <laughs> on your weenus? That's that's what this is. This is the weenus right here. Anyway. Right. Okay. We're about a minute. Okay. So we take it off, and you can actually see it has formed to my face. It has formed to my unique size for the shape of the nose. And stuff like that. Now you can kind of tell about where the eyes are. 
And this is kind of, ideally you would have an X-Acto knife or something like that. But basically you want to just slowly dig in and basically just cut out eye holes. Now, I, again, you know, this is something that you could, can kind of measure out. You know, ideally you want to try and measure it out beforehand or a bit more exact than what we're doing. When, when doing something like this, though, I do recommend starting with a blank like this instead of trying to perfectly cut out the shape that you want it to be. That way you get the form, and then once the form is on your face, okay, so you can figure right. it out from there and, and trim your edges and everything else. That way you're not going back going, you're, you're not losing space in the folds as it folds to your face. And then uh, going and saying, oh, well, I, I, I need to make another one because it's, there wasn't enough material there to, to take up the fold. Now, these particular sheets that we're using here, um, I actually paid $25 for like 78 of them. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you get them off of Amazon or something like that? Yeah. Okay, so this eye hole needs to be, they, they need to be <laughs> opened up a little bit along the bottom. This has turned into a mask out of a Rob Zombie film. But, and again, you know, if, if you're doing this for your costume, you're probably going to want to be a bit more precise than what we're doing. We're really just kind of doing it, you know. Show the Spur of the, the moment. Technique. Show the technique. Show how, how easy it can be done. Um, give you some ideas as to how to, you know, how you might want to make your mask for that. You know, so, we, okay. So if we were going full pro here, then uh, yeah, we'd I be would, heating this up over and over yeah. again. To yeah, get it would be heating it up. It would be, we'd be using exacto, an exacto knife for that. Something that's light and easy and you can carve real easy. But that's the general idea. You know, you get the eye holes out and then you reheat it and you just plaster it to your face again. Um, it's really, it's really easy. And then, like I said, you can, like we said, you can, you know, curve it around. You can attach a string so that it pulls back. You can do the little edges face. like Nightwing. If you want it, if you want, if you don't want a string or you don't want it any further around your head, actually spirit gum or liquid latex will adhere it to your face. And one of the other interesting things with the thin EVA foam is you can use it, you can use a sewing machine on it. Mm -hmm. oh. It is thin enough that you can use a sewing machine. I mean, if you have a needle that will work with leather, it'll work with this super easy. Oh, I, I just a regular fabric needle would work with that. Yeah. And in fact, when I make my uh, holsters, and I'm punching through cardboard, so I make gun holsters too. And that's one of those things. It's like, so you'll go to an event, go to a cosplay event or something and get a really interesting gun, but then you have no pocket that it'll fit in or you want a cool holster for it or something. And all I do there is I take like a, 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 a the kind of uh, cardboard that you get out of a beer can box. So it's not corrugated cardboard, it's just that thin it's cardboard. It's that real thin, re yeah. Or, or even poster board would do it. And I just fold it over the gun and then figure out where I want the shape to be and then grab the fabric that I want to use. Uh, I've even got some very thin, very soft leather that I kind of wanted to make some holsters out of. And then with just a basic fabric needle on a crappy $70 Walmart sewing machine, sew it all together, or sew the, sew the fabric to the cardboard so that it's over the edges. And uh, then I just pop rivet it together, you know, sew on my straps and everything else and pop rivet it together. Uh, and you can do very much the same thing with the, the, the EVA foam. Now with the EVA foam, I kind of wonder if, you know, doing it over the over the the cardboard and stuff like that, and then heating it up to so that it holds that. Because I mean, even with just one, even you know, here here we are, ten minutes later or so, you can still kind of see the nose. It's mm. kind of gotten you know, it's kind of expanded back out, and that's why you reheat several times. But I wonder if it wouldn't, you know actually add more rigidity to that holster. It would. The the problem with the problem with using, you know, like poster board and that is that it's not as it's not as malleable to get these details. Like you would have to get it wet, put it on a mold, and then let it dry that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But the thing is is if you if you have, you know, if you're if you're looking at something like for a holster, you don't need that fine detail. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you want that fine detail you can just—it's really easy. Yeah. Because you just take another—you just take another one. And you take a, take a knife, 
Um, again, I would recommend a an exacto knife or something like that. But basically, you just carve your design into it, and basically, you just say, "Okay, you literally just glue it on, sand it down, sand the edges so that it's a bit so that it flushes down a bit more." And I think I just, I think I just made a, a, a Wilford Wharf stash holster. <laughs> it totally looks like a pink mustache. God damn it! And then, Ugh. and then do that before you put your plastic coat or plastic dip coat on it. And uh, I, it depends on if you want to paint over, if you want everything the same shade, or if you want it a different color. Well, uh, yeah, and it depends on the effect you want. So if you want that effect to be, you know, kind of something that blends in with the rest of it really easily or something yeah. that stands out like the well, yeah like of, I said if you right want here. it if you want it the same color or not and this is an interesting thing be careful with 80s 80s props this is a, a BB gun from the 80s if you notice it never had it never had an orange Whoa. tip and just just weapons in general uh, be be careful be aware because there is and and, and when you're when you're cosplaying, if if you're trying to cosplay with something that that doesn't or have the orange tip, well, like you can see in there that that's the orange tip. But that might be hard for somebody else with a firearm to see. But like with this <laughs> with this one, this had an orange tip originally. But because mm. we're using because we I bought it to use as a uh, a prop for film work, that orange tip had to be painted black so that it wasn't mm. going to stand out on film. Yeah, basically mind your props. Uh, just realize that even though you're playing, other people around you might not know that. And something else to think about, especially in regards to other people, is you can cosplay whatever you want. You can, I, you can cosplay, I hell, you can cosplay an Asian Zorro if you're Asian. It doesn't matter. I have seen so many people pl cosplay everything under the sun. It I, doesn't matter your ethnicity. You know, I did a gender bent uh, uh, Harley Quinn last year, and I was really pleased with how it came out. Yeah, but that's very different than doing blackface to fit uh, in with cosplaying Bishop from X Men. Yeah, I. If I you're white and you want to do Bishop, do a white version of Bishop. Nobody's gonna care. It's that is gonna be so much more accepted than if you try and artificially make yourself look like another ethnicity. Yeah, yeah. It's and now there are some there are some that nobody's gonna care about. Like if you want to do Mystique, I don't think you're gonna run into a Smurf that's gonna be pissed that you painted yourself blue. Yeah, but, but... it's one of those things <laughs> where it's like, yeah, you don't have to. You do not have to. Be the proper ethnic background for a specific character. I, they change the they change ethnicities for characters on a whim. It happened a couple times in in Battlestar Galactica. It happens in comics all the time. And, yeah, and it happens in comics. It happens from comics to from comics to to movies. It happens within comics. Uh, Nicholas. Uh, uh, Nick Fury was originally white, uh, a white commander, f uh, ar and from in the army back in World War II, and then they mm. changed him for the Ultimates to be Samuel, Samuel L. L. Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, way better than David Hasselhoff. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, David Hasselhoff's was He's the that Hulk. strange period of comic book of comic book movies that included Dolph Lundgren as the Punisher. I thought he did good. He did good for the movie, but that was not the Punisher. Yeah. The Punisher was not suicidal. He wears the skull over his his bulletproof vest because that's where people are that's what people are going to aim at. Mm. It stands out, so that's where they're going to aim. So they're going to aim for a bulletproof vest and he's going to be safe. He's not suicidal. Miss, but he was with Dolphin. I wish they'd gone further with the Thomas Jane Punisher, but I am yeah. very happy with the, uh, uh, apparently Netflix is doing, the, they're actually moving forward with the Punisher series. Cool. So I'm happy I'd, about that. Yeah, that would be nice to uh, see. Long, long story short here is that cosplay is about being able to play with any idea and bend it any way you want. I did an Occupy and Middle Earth work one year. <laughs> and more than anything, it's about having fun. 
You want to have fun. And as bad as it may sound, if you offend somebody, that's going to limit how much fun you have because now you have to deal with somebody who's pissed off because you're trying to be something you're not. What do you think? What do you use to make your costumes? What do what do you think about the cosplay versus costuming? Um, yeah. Leave a comment down below and let us know. And actually, go ahead and share some of the pics of your favorite costumes that you've ever done. Hopefully, original ones. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. If you have, if they're posted on Instagram or something like that, uh, send us a tweet. Um, Wow, uh, let's just do hashtag nerdening, co nerdening cosplay. Yeah, nerdening cosplay. As always, thank you very much for watching. And stay tuned for more from Ola Productions and The American Machine. If we'll see you, you next time. see some crazy adults all lazy, then you should meet me and my friends. Even though we got no money, but show yourself funny. Yeah, wow, a rude awakening. Like or... The seven year ouch. That's something made. You are hyping this. You know, you are hyping a movie or you are hyping a game trying to get people to donate. 